Uh, yep, hello. So thank you very much for this opportunity um, to talk to you about some of uh, my uh, research that I've been doing uh, in my PhD, uh, together with my supervisors, uh, Johan Brocker and uh, Tobias Kuhner from the University of Reading. So I'll be talking about the uh, stability of the nonlinear filter. And so just as an outline, I'll just uh, discuss a little bit what is the optimal filter and what is stability. I'll give a little bit of the rich uh, literature background results that exist. I'll talk about the filtering equations and then I will talk a little bit, so I'll give the main result and just talk a little bit about the proof, just the ideas of the proof, not um, any technical uh, things. Uh, so in the most broad sense, what is uh, data simulation, the filtering problem? So it's estimating the signal xn, uh, given all the observations uh, yn up to that time iteratively, as we have seen uh, already. And by optimal filter, what we mean is the estimate in the uh, mean square sense, uh, which then naturally in the Bayesian framework gives rise to a sequence of uh, conditional probabilities. So probability of xn given all the observations up to yn. And we know that for linear Gaussian uh, prior and errors and linear systems, the common filter is the optimal filter. But the explicit computation of nonlinear systems of the uh, posterior is uh, a lot more difficult and um, computationally can be computationally expensive. Um, and so we can formulate the optimal, uh, the filtering in two familiar steps, which we have in data simulation, which is the prediction and the update steps. And this is if we have uh, density for the uh, posterior at time t n minus 1, then the prediction density is just the density of the, um, under the dynamics of the f of the, um, uh, of the random variable. So, and, this, and there's an operator called the transfer operator or Frobenius parent, which uh, takes us from one to the other. So, and also this is just the conditional probability of x n given all the observations up to times t n minus 1. And then we do, uh, we incorporate by the update the latest observation. And so this is just denoted by B here, which is the multiplication by the likelihood um, and the normalization. And this all depends on the YN, obviously. And so we can just uh, find one operator for the filtering operator, which is a combination of the two. And it takes us from the density PN minus one to uh, density PN at time TN. So of course, to uh, initialize the filtering, we need the initial uh, distribution. Uh, and this can be a problem because we, don't, we may not know it accurately or, uh, or at all. And so then we have a problem of whether different uh, priors converge to the same thing. And this is precisely uh, stability. So given any two initial priors, uh, say P0 and Q0, and some uh, metric on distributions, um, the filtering process is said to be stable if these converge under the filtering operator as time goes to infinity. And obviously if it does, then the errors are forgotten um, and we can be more um, happy. <laughs> so another key um, point for stability or, or the reason why it's important or can be useful is that if we have a rate of decay, then we can make other uh, approximations regarding other errors. So, or estimates or bounds, for example, the model error. And so this is why, or the motivation why we are considering or studying the stability. So as I said, uh, there's a rich literature. Uh, it has been studied in various situations. You can look at uh, linear, nonlinear dynamics, Gaussian, non-Gaussian, uh, random, non-random signals, uh, optimal or non-optimal filters, like uh, 3D var, et cetera. And then, for linear random dynamics, we, it has been known for quite a while that the Kalman filter uh, is stable under some bro broad conditions uh, of, uh, um, on the observations and the signal. Uh, for linear deterministic systems in the context uh, of data simulation, there's a paper by uh, Bouquet, Gurumurthy, Apte, Karasi, Grishin, and Jones in 2017, where they show that the um, sequence of error covariances of the filtering um, actually uh, forgets the initial error covariance. So it does not depend on the initial one. And this is just uh, has the condition that you have to observe this, the unstable and the neutral uh, subspaces. Um, 
So for, for nonlinear random dynamical systems, uh, this is where most of the work has focused on, uh, focused on the stochastic dynamics. And it relies on the mixing properties of the signal due to the stochasticity. Um, so it's, it started with the work uh, by Kunita in around 1970, um, where he uh, shows that the filtering process is uh, Markovian, roughly, uh, based on some conditions. And based on this, O'Connor and Pardue, they showed LP-type convergence, and they have some um, actual uh, convergence uh, rate as well for particular cases like the Kalman filter. And then subsequently we had the paper by Attar and Zaituni, and they extended the result and they can show almost sure stability in the uh, total variation norm. And then Leglon and Ujan, they further relax this uh, ergodicity assumptions. And then at some point there was a, a problem identified or a gap in the main proof of Kunita um, which was a problem because a lot of the results on stability were based on this main theorem. Uh, but fortunately, this was, uh, the gap was closed uh, by Van Handel in 2009 uh, under some slightly stronger conditions that were needed. So this is a strong ergodicity on the signal and um, there was a non-degeneracy of observations as well. And then they were able to show that the stochastic 2D Navier-Stokes equations actually satisfied those uh, conditions. But um, unfortunately, under this approach, the rate of convergence is, is not able to be uh, shown. It does not provide one. Um, so uh, there has been less results in the deterministic case. There is a, it is difficult to transfer uh, directly the approach from the random dynamics because it relies on the stochasticity and the ergodicity due to stochasticity. Uh, and so it's any forgetting that you might have uh, has to come from the dynamics. And in a paper in 2017, Brocker and Del Magno, so they're able to use the approach from the random, uh, from the random dynamics um, by using the ergodic property of expanding maps. And this is precisely what um, we've been trying to extend. So we want to extend the analysis now to where we have also a contracting direction. And uh, we hope, so this brings us to the setting of hyperbolic dynamical systems, and we, we hope to use the, you know, the known chaotic uh, nature of this. So just some uh, assumptions and notations, they're pretty standard. Um, so we just assume something called a memoryless uh, channel, so the observations are uh, identically distributed and independent, uh, conditioned on the signal. And so this um, particular means that the probability or of all the observations given all the uh, uh, signal uh, up to time Tn is just the product of the individual conditional probabilities. We also assume there is a likelihood function uh, G, which is the density with respect to some measure uh, of the likelihood, so probability of Y given X. And then we have the transition kernel, which is the conditional probability of X given the previous state. And then finally, we have the uh, initial prior distribution, uh, P0, and it's the sensitivity to this that we wish to now uh, explore. And so these are the uh, filtering uh, equations. So under the assumptions that we've given, uh, we, we can be shown that they satisfy this recursion. And you can see there that we have uh, the prediction density, which is the five, which depends on the kernel, the transition. Uh, and then uh, we just have the update, we can see the likelihood and the normalization uh, that is happening there. But we are interested in the deterministic setting. And so if F is a deterministic map on some smooth manifold, then, and then and Xn is uh, generated by F, then Xn is uh, completely determined by X0, the initial one. And so any uh, uncertainty comes from the uncertainty in X0. Um, so, given this, we can reformulate the filtering equations and they simplify. You can see there's no, no longer any kernel. We, what we have is the transfer operator, which is giving the prediction uh, pr uh, densities. And um, we have, again, the normalization and the likelihood. 
And so we can uh, write the filtering operator, in, we can split it into two. There is the uh, unnormalized and the normalized with a little uh, twiddle. And the seven, the unnormalized one, is, is a linear operator. And the reason we split it uh, is because in our uh, approach to the proof, we are able to work just with the linear uh, operator. And this simplifies um, things a lot. And so before I go to the main result, I'll just talk to you about the uh, dynamics we're working with. So um, this is the uh, uniformly hyperbolic dynamics. So F is you know, said to be uniformly hyperbolic if it's a diffeomorphism on a smooth, compact uh, manifold. And uh, in a non-technical way uh, description, it means that there is a uh, expanding and contracting direction at every point on the attractor. Um, and this uh, expansion is uniform for, uh, and, and contraction is uniform. In a more technical way, it means that the tangent bundle um, at every point, or the tangent space at every point, uh, has a splitting into stable and unstable uh, subspaces, which are transversal, and this, uh, so they span this uh, tangent bundle. And there's some examples, or they are classified into anosov diffeomorphisms or axiom A diffeomorphisms, depending on whether the whole space uh, is an attractor or not. So I'll just give you um, quick examples. So this is an example of an anosov diffeomorphism. It's the famous Arnold's uh, cat map. It's a, an example of a hyperbolic toral automorphism from uh, the torus to itself. And the torus you can just think of as the surface of, the, of a donut. Um, and it's given by this equation uh, there. And this um, matrix has a terminant one. So it's invertible uh, and it's volume preserving, which means that the invariant measure is the Lebesgue measure on this, uh, on this one. And of course, we have a contracting and expanding directions at every point. These are just given by the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, which one is bigger than one, which one is less than one. And Example of an axiom A system. So we have the solenoid or the uh, Smale Williams attractor. So here the manifold is a solid torus, so the whole donut, the inside of the donut. And it's a product space of the circle and a disk. Um, and so it gives the rise to the natural coordinates. So you've got the theta, which is uh, on the circle, and you've got a z coordinate, which is on the disk. And it's given by an expansion along the circle and there's a contraction on the disk, which is because these uh, constants you can see there are less than one. And there's also a rotation. So you can think of it being stretched, folded, and put back uh, into, the, into the donut. So just before I state the main result, I want to tell you some, of the, some important uh, properties of Yn, which are just a consequence of our assumptions, which are actually needed uh, later. There's a well-known result for a uh, uniformly hyperbolic F as described before. Uh, so then, so F admits a unique SRB or physical uh, measure. And you can see a very nice proof in the paper by Viana uh, called Stochastic Dynamics of Deterministic Systems. And then from that, you can show that if um, X0 is distributed, um, has a distribution mu0, then the signal process generated by F is ergodic, and if Yn is uh, IID, conditioned on Xn, which it is, uh, according to our assumptions, then it is also an ergodic process. And so in particular, we can express Yn with this ergodic um, map from the probability space, so, every, so Yn can be expressed in terms of uh, Y1, an iteration. So this is our uh, main result. I just reformulate uh, the filtering operator to be on measures. Sorry, let me just see. This doesn't want to be. Yeah. To be uh, on measures. So it's the same as you've seen before, the normalizations. There is a transfer operator happening and the likelihood function. And so our uh, result is that there is a, a measure, mu omega, uh, which is covariant under this operator. And uh, so what this means is exactly is precisely this. It means that mu omega is a stationary uh, solution in this sense. And then for the main part, so for any 
positive function, which is a log holder, um, which represents the initial density. Uh, the filtering uh, con uh, converges to the uh, filtering mu omega as we go to zero. So that's the stability uh, result that we obtain. And actually this approach uh, also gives rise to a decay rate as well. So I'll just talk about some main ideas of the proof. Um, the key idea is adapted from Vienna, the same uh, paper that I mentioned before. And the idea is to average along the stable uh, direction, which is the contracting one. And the reason for that um, is that the, the contracting direction is going to make densities less regular. So you can even imagine them becoming uh, singular along the um, stable manifold. But along the unstable direction, uh, it has an effect of making densities smoother. And just to show this effect, I'm going to just go back to the uh, solenoid example because it's very easy to visualize and see uh, what's happening. But it, you know, the same things apply in the general setting. So the contraction, as we said, is along the disks, which uh, are known as a foliation uh, of stable leaves. So we call them leaves. And um, for the solenoid, it's uniquely defined by the theta on the circle. And then we have an expansion along uh, the S1 for every Z. Um, and this is also a part of a horizontal, what's called, uh, or, or unstable foliation. So every, we call them uh, the leaves uh, gamma, delta, etc. <laughs> and every leaf uh, gamma, you can see these little two black circles. They are the pre-images. So every one of them has two. Uh, yeah, just by the, uh, just from the definition of the map. And so if we take two stable leaves, two stable leaves close by, then they will have, each one will have two uh, pre-images. So if we take the, we just number them so that they're close together because you'll have two here and two, let's say, further apart. Uh, and you take a map pi, which goes from gamma to delta, which is just a projection along the unstable direction. So in this case, if you have the coordinates theta 1 z in gamma, you end up in theta 2 z in delta. Uh, and you can define a distance from these just along this leaf. And then you can define a distance on the leaves. And in this distance, the map that's induced on uh, the stable leaves is expanding. And uh, so we, we, in a sense, try to use this uh, property. Uh, so what we do is we define a metric space of densities. Uh, these are technically known as cones, and we work with a Hilbert projective metric. Um, and we want to show that the operator is a contraction uh, on, this, uh, on these cones. And so just to uh, show you what I meant by taking averages. So phi are our uh, densities, and, we, these, and the row are test functions, which belong to some other uh, space. They're just log holder continuous and positive. And these sets are just uh, going to be part of the cone, and they are conditions. And so what we require is a kind of uh, log holder condition in this uh, metric that we defined just before uh, on averages. And so if we think of the Joseph Frobenius parent operator, um, we can see that this might then uh, be smoothing or that the uh, Frobenius parent oper operator is going to uh, be invariant in this set. So it's going to map any phi that satisfies this back into this, but just because of this regular regularization. Um, of course, it's not as simple for the filtering operator because it it's also has the randomness, so the likelihood, and therefore we have, to, uh, we have to work with uh, random cones. So there's a lot of work that uh, then goes into finding these uh, constants which uh, define our uh, cone. And on this cone, we show that the filtering operator is a contraction. Um, and then there's some results which uh, show that if it is a strict contraction, um, there is a, a kind of fixed point theorem um, where we can actually uh, deduce that there is a convergence to a distribution. So the convergence is not to a density, it cannot be due to the contraction, 
and the, the, the singularity that can uh, occur, but uh, to a distribution. And this is regardless of the initial density uh, up to some holder regularity. And the Hilbert metrics on the cones uh, allows us to work with the linear part of the filter because essentially it doesn't care about any constants that you're multiplying with, um, which means that we can introduce the nonlinear part later. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea of the proof. So in conclusion, so the dynamics can be sufficiently mixing so that the filter forgets the initial condition. Um, but yeah, the initial condition needs to be a density with some uh, smoothness. Okay. Thank you. We have time uh, for several questions, so let's start with Brian. Thank you. So you mentioned a couple times an assumption about the observations, the Ys being IID. Yeah. And I, I understand the need for independence. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the identical part or in, the, in this case or whether you need it. So could you comment on, you know, sort of what you're assuming, are you assuming something about identicality and if so, what? And uh, Not directly, um, yeah. we. It could, be a, it could be that we just need that it's um, independent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'd, like to ask, <clears throat> I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. Let's say, could you talk about, uh, I guess, future directions and possible challenges if you wanted to consider a similar uh, argument to the discussion, but where the dynamics are non-uniformly hyperbolic? Yeah. Um, so. There isn't the same analysis uh, and then the same approach has not been done on the uh, non-hyperbolic case. But yeah, that's definitely the direction that you would uh, try to go in and, use, and also use the same approach of cones uh, maybe for other types entirely. So I think there was some discussion uh, on time-dependent systems or um, yeah, something maybe with just partially non-hyperbolic and where you could handle some uh, almost sure uh, hyperbolicity, etc. So you could extend it uh, there, but yeah, I think it's an approach which obviously uh, allows us to work um, in the completely non-linear setting. So you're not linearizing anything, which is uh, great, and you are able to get rid of this um, normalization as well. So yeah, it could be hopefully uh, more directions, more systems that you can look at. That would be the the best case scenario. Yeah. Perhaps just a, a comment. Yeah. Um, in the context of um, time series, um, uh, with model where you have uh, randomness, um, I've got a result which uh, shows stability. Okay. Um, where uh, essentially what you have to assume is that the measurement noise um, is smaller that the noise that perturbs the model. Mm -hmm. um, and not just that, uh, we have rates of convergence and we also prove uniform convergence of the corresponding particle filter. Ah, okay, all right. And this is for random dynamics. And this is for random okay, dynamics. Okay, okay, I need to look at that. And this yeah. lifts up all the problems with ergodicity and any other constraints uh -huh. that might come mm -hmm. from the remnants of Kunita's problems with his arguments. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. More questions? All right. I'd like to ask another question. Um, so regarding, let's say, a, a practical filtering algorithm, is this, I guess, representative of perhaps uh, like an idealized particle filter, um, infinite samples or something like this? And how would this translate into something that could be implemented, say, in practice, even in, let's say, another toy system that could be Axiom A, anything like this? Um, yeah, it would be hard, I think, <laughs> to, to maybe like a particle uh, filter of some sort. Yeah, you could uh, envis envisage, but I'm not sure how it would... Um, Perhaps because you don't have to deal with the uh, normalization, you could potentially envisage something uh, of, of an application to the particle, to the particle filter, but not something that I've, yeah, it's pretty theoretical at the, this stage. <laughs> yeah. Very nice, nonetheless. Uh, any other questions? 
Okay, then with that, uh, we can conclude here. Let's thank Leia again.